you, that's, there's nothing, nothing more that we could want yep. than the Holy Spirit of God to rest in this place. Amen. And you can come in here and you can say, well, I don't feel Him, preacher. Well, I don't know why you don't feel Him because He is here. He is in the house. He was here this morning. He's here tonight. God's presence is here. The Holy Spirit of God is here. He is alive. He is well. He is not dead. He is not in a grave nowhere. He's not in the tomb anymore. He is alive and He is well. And guess what? We belong to Him. Amen. Amen. And I, I'm glad to know tonight that we belong to Him. And tonight, you, you may be you may come here tonight and you say, "Well, I I, I don't know if I if I belong to Him, but I feel Him." Well, I want you to know before you leave this place tonight, you can belong to Him. It is a free gift that is given. Uh, it does not cost anything. It's a free gift that He wants us to have. He wants us to belong to Him. He sent His Son, Jesus, to save the lost, save sinners. That was His purpose. That was His goal is to come and save the lost. Uh, and tonight, that is still going abroad. Uh, we, we heard this morning about the Gideons and how they are spreading the Holy Word of God all over the world. And we can do the same. Say, well, I, I, no, I'm not a, I'm not into the, the mission field, and all. You don't have to be. Live your life on a daily basis, reflecting right. Jesus Christ. Right. You know, like we talked about this morning, we have got to learn to die to ourselves, and if we die to self, Christ can live within us. Uh, yeah. uh, but in order for that to happen, we have to belong to Him. Uh, tonight we're going to be in Isaiah chapter 43, and we're going to look at verses one and two. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 and 2. And I want to talk to you on the subject of I belong to Him. Uh, because everybody in this world belongs to somebody. You have a mother, you have a father, and you belong to them. Uh, there is no way that you can deny that. There are some people in this world today that do not want to claim their family. They don't want to claim... But if they take a blood sample, there is some DNA inside of that blood that connects you with that person. I want you to know tonight that there's some blood in our DNA that connects us with the Holy Lamb of God. And that is His shed blood on the cross. And it only takes one drop. All it takes is one drop of blood and you can belong to Him and you can be heirs of the throne of God. We can be. The Bible says that we are royal priesthood. We are a chosen generation. Generation. We belong to Jesus Christ. Uh, so we have King's blood on us. And, uh, and, he, and so I want you to see tonight that if we belong to Him, this is what He says. Let's stand and honor the reading of the Word tonight. Isaiah 43, verse 1 and 2. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Let's pray tonight. Dear God, we come to you, Lord, as humbly as we know how tonight. God, I pray by the holy unction of God, God, that you would move through this place. And God, I pray if there is one person in this room tonight who is lost and dying and, and they do not belong to you, I pray that before this night is over, God, that they can understand they can belong to you. God, if they feel the Spirit of God tugging on their heart, He says in the Word of God, if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, we shall be saved. And Lord, you said the only way to come is if the Holy Spirit Spirit of God woos us to come. And Lord, I pray, God, that you would begin to woo in this room tonight. And God, for just one, if there's only one tonight, God, I pray that before this night is over, when they walk out these doors, they'll have your DNA in their blood. And Lord, we love you. We're going to give you praise for what you've already done and what you're going to continue to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Jonathan, would you get me another water, please? 
Thank you, bud. <clears throat> so, tonight, we understand, first of all, he's, he's speaking here and he says, Thus saith the Lord. The Lord is speaking here. The Lord is saying that He created thee. Number one, that shuts down the idea of the Big Bang Theory. Yep. And, all, and all these other things that say, well, we were, uh, we were just, uh, you know, we, we weren't created by God. There was something else going on. I'm sorry to tell you tonight, but God is the one who created you. Yeah. It says out of the dust of the ground, man was created. And it says God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Uh, so we understand tonight that we are created by God and God alone. Uh, understand, stay with me tonight. Don't worry about what's going on right here. Focus on what God's got for you tonight. Double barrel. Thank you, brother. Uh, understand tonight that God loves you. God paid a price for you that no one else can pay. And we are, and He says that He created us. He created us. Now, he says there, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. If, if I hope and pray that you highlight in your Bible and you write in your Bible, right there beside where it says, O Jacob and O Israel, in my Bible, I put my name. Yeah. So as you read that portion of Scripture, Now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Donnie, he that formed thee, O Donnie. Put yeah. your name right there. Because when we get to this next portion, this latter portion of this verse, this is a personal thing. The Lord is speaking to us on a personal level. Uh, your Christianity is not from your family. Your Christianity is not from your preacher. Your Christianity is not from the people in this world. It's not from your friends. It is a personal relationship. And He said, Number one, fear not. Why do we walk around defeated? Why do we walk around living in fear? God has not given us a state of fear, but God has given us a state of peace. God wants you to have peace in your life. The devil wants you to walk around in fear. But he said, fear not. So as we read the scripture and we put our name there, he created us, he formed us, fear not. If He created you and He formed you, you got nothing to be afraid of. You have nothing to fear of. Everybody in this world today is in panic mode. We're coming down to a close. All kinds of things are happening. Putting chips and planting chips in people. All these kind of things. A cashless society. My son, my son Jonathan here, he's, he's a working man now. He's got him his checking account. Got him a debit card. He ought to seen him. <laughs> he went down to the QT today to go buy ice cream for everybody. And he stuck that car in there. A woman says, you got to turn the strip the other way. <laughs> he, he was like, <laughs> he's probably, he's looking at me now like, Dad, shut up. <laughs> but understanding, that's the society we live in. Yes, Cashless society. Mm -hmm. Just swipe and go. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so... Things are progressing. Prophecy is being fulfilled. Yes, is. Turn on your television. Watch the news. Read the newspaper. Yes. All you got to do is look around you and know that we are drawing ever so close yes. to the end of time. Amen. Jesus is all but fixing to split the eastern sky yes. and call His children home. Yes. So I want you to understand tonight that if He has formed us and He has created us, we have nothing to fear. Amen. The only thing you got to fear is fear itself. And who puts that there? The devil. The devil is the one who puts fear in your mind. He puts he, he gets up in here. This is his playground. The devil gets in your mind. He plays all kinds of mind games with you. He will tell you all manner of things. That's how he destroys people's lives is through their mind. <laughs> People deal with all manner of things. You want to know how marriage relationships fall apart. The enemy gets in the mind. He'll get in the mind of the spouse and he'll begin to work and he'll begin to put all manner of things in your head and before you know it, marriage is falling apart. Before you know it, your life is falling apart. Before you know it, it feels like the whole world's falling down on you. Why? Because the enemy got in your mind. But God said, fear not. Why? 
Why do we not fear? Number two, I have redeemed thee. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to know tonight that I have been redeemed. I've been redeemed by the grace and the glory of God. They sang a song, I got saved. Hallelujah. I'm glad to know I got saved. There was one day when I was about 10 years old, I was at the First Baptist Church Indian Trail, and it wasn't the big cathedral it is now. It was the... I was in the, well, the school. Yeah. It's now a school. That's where I was. Yeah. I was in the old building. And I was sitting there with my mom and dad. And I felt the tug. Mm -hmm. The whole, whole heart starts beating real fast. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, struggling. <laughs> so, man, you can't get saved at 10 years old. I'm sure you can. Yeah, you can. God knows when to speak, how to speak. And he drawed me to the altar and I got saved. Amen. Redeemed. He says, I have redeemed thee. That means that God has redeemed you. Your past does not matter right. anymore. When you come to an old-fashioned altar or wherever God pulls on your heartstrings, yeah. you can be in the middle of the woods hunting. You can be yeah. doing any manner of thing. You can be driving down the road and God speak to your heart. And God say, I want to come into your heart. And you, at that moment, you say, God, God, I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. And God, I believe you died on the cross for me. I can confess my sins before you. God, come into my heart and save me. Boom! In that instant, you have been redeemed. No longer does sin have a hold on you. No longer does the past matter. He says, I cast your sins as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered again. But guess who's going to help you remember? The devil. That old sorry devil. He'll say, boy, how are you going to go sit in church and knowing what you did yesterday? Let me tell you something, devil. I am not scared of you. I do not fear you. Why? Because I have been redeemed. I have been redeemed by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And that ought to give you something to be a little excited about tonight to know that you have been redeemed. We've been redeemed. And he said, I have called thee by thy name. God knows your name tonight. He don't know my name, preacher. Oh, yes, He does. Why? Because He created you. He knows every hair on your head. He knows everything about you. He knows what you did 10 minutes ago. He knows what you're thinking right now. He knows what's going to happen to you when you leave here tonight. God knows you. And God is calling. God is calling. So thirdly, we see that I have called thee. There is the call. Preacher, I ain't got that call. Everybody, when they hear the word called, I ain't no preacher. Uh-uh. God ain't calling me to that. I'm just talking about the call of God. Yep. Right in the middle of your work day, driving down the road, whatever you do, right smack in the middle of your work day, boom, Donnie, calls your name. Whoo, right in the middle of what you do. Whoa, what, yes, Lord. I'm listening. Calling you by name. God, when God wants your attention, He will call you. He will call you. Why? Because we are His. When your daddy called you, you heard Him. Yeah. When daddy said, boy... I knew the tone. I, I, people know what I'm talking about. Yep. When Daddy changed that tone of voice, it is bad news. It is bad, and you can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> it's like the, that cop song playing in my head. Bad boys, bad boys. What you going to do when it comes for you? He's coming. He's going to find you. You can go hide, but he's going to find you. God's calling. You can go hide. You can run all you want to. He'll find you. Yeah. If God's will is for you to be saved and be born again, He will continue to call yes, he and He will continue to call until He finds you. That's right. Until you give in. You can run, but you cannot hide. That's right. You know, so many times you hear of preachers how they ran from it. They ran from the call of God to the ministry. Me and my wife was talking about this the other night and I said, I said, I really don't, you know, I hear a lot of preachers talk about how they ran, and I, 
to some degree, I guess I ran. She said, oh, yeah, you ran. <laughs> <laughs> she had to live with me. And Kathy knows what I'm talking about, too. Yeah. You know, they had to live with us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Running. Being angry. Mm -hmm. Just just no. I don't want this. No. Yep. No. But God's calling. Yeah. God is calling out. And He says, Thou art mine. Amen. I'm glad to know tonight Amen. that I yeah. am yeah. His. Yeah. There, there is some DNA inside of me that connects me with my Heavenly Father. And I have been born again. I have been redeemed. I am connected. I am His. I belong to Him. Child of God, I hope and pray tonight, if you're in here, you belong to Him. That you can say without a doubt, without question, I am His. He said, Thou art mine. That means we belong to Him. We have, we have physical things. And we say they're mine. That's my car. That's my house. That's my stuff. God, God looks down from heaven. That's mine. He's mine. She's mine. This little baby. Mine. Why? It hasn't reached the age of accountability yet to understand. God says that's mine. God created life. Yes, he did. <laughs> Little brother says, yeah, he's talking about the table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It belongs to God. That's right. We belong to Him. And He says in verse 2, when thou pass through the waters. I got news for you tonight. The water's coming. The water is coming. The water is for some of you. The water's here. We in the middle of the water right now. He says, but when I, when I pass through the waters, he said, I will be with thee. I, I need you to know tonight that you're going to go through the waters. I cannot stand here and tell you that when you accept Christ and you belong to Him, that it's going to be a bed of roses. It's all going to be good. I cannot tell you that because I would be lying to you. I have to give you the full gospel. Why do you think He continually, time and time again, puts in the Scriptures, I will be with you. I will care for you. Cast all your burdens upon me because I care for you. He said... When we pass through the waters, I will be with thee. I might be in the water, and that water might be coming up to my mouth, and I might be about to drown, but Jesus said, I'm with you. I got you. I've got you, and I will get you through it. Why? Because you're mine. And I will be with you. When you pass through the waters, I will be with thee. And then he says, through the rivers, we went from water to river. That's, that's a big old jump. The river, if you've ever been to the mountains or wherever there's a river, that current is tough. I mean, it's cruising. You can watch a leaf fall into the river and it's gone. The enemy, it says there's a scripture. I, forgive me, I can't tell you where it's at right at the moment. But it says when the enemy comes in like a flood. Yes. The Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against That's Him. Right. And I'm glad to know tonight the river's coming. Yeah. The rivers are coming. The rivers may be here. But again, He reminds us. He said, They shall not overflow thee. That means it might get right up to your nose. And you feel like, This is it. I'm done. I'm going down. Lord, where are you? And He says, I'm right here. Just hang That's on. Right. Just hold on a minute. I'll be here. I'm here. Amen. Uh, you belong to me. You think I'm going to let you drown? The sparrow that falls to the ground, God knows every one of them. How much more He cares for you. That's right. How much more He loves you. He said, so when the rivers come, they will not overflow thee. Oh, and then He says, when we walk through the fire, 
When we walk through the fire, what is fire? When your marriage is about to fall apart, what is fire? When you lose someone who is so dear to your life, what is fire? When you're standing at the barrel of a gun about to blow your brains out, what is fire? When God tempts you with all manner of things, when He tells you, your wife's at home, she don't know where you are, go ahead. Nobody will find out. What is fire? That is fire. And he said, when you walk through the fire, he says, thou shalt not be burned. You will not be burned. How can we go through a fire and not be burned? Because you belong to him. You are God's child. You are royal priesthood. You belong to him. And he says, Thou shalt not be burned. <laughs> I'm glad to know tonight. It don't matter what it is. It does not matter what you're facing, what you're going through. God says, you are mine. That's yeah. right. Amen. And I will be there for you through everything. Yeah. When, you, when you pick up the phone... And nobody's there. God says, I'm here. Yep. Child of God, you belong to me. He is always there. He's always available. And He is always on time. Amen. You know, we feel like sometimes, well, God, where are you at? God, what's going on? Why is it taking so long? We know God's timetable is not our timetable. Right. God works on a little different schedule than we do. We do not dictate to Him what happens. Yep. He is in control. He is in charge. Yep. He is king over everything. If you come to Bible study, you'll learn about that. Yep. He is king over everything. He is king over all. Even over man, He is king. Yep. And it's His way. That's right. And it's His way or the highway. You cannot dabble and play games with God. You cannot play with fire. You will get burned. That's right. But preacher, you just read, if I go through the fire, I won't get burned if you belong to Him. That's right. That's right. There are people, just because they come to church does not mean they belong to Him. Right. There are people sitting in churches all across America on a highway to hell. Yep. They are burning that highway wide open. It says broad is the way to destruction, but narrow is the way that leadeth to life. And I'm glad to know tonight that it might be hard. It might be difficult. There might be water coming. There might be a river coming. There might be some fire coming somewhere along the way. But I'm glad to know tonight I belong to Him. I am redeemed. I have been set free. And He no longer has a hold on me. He even said... He just, he just, he's wonderful. God's wonderful. He says, Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. <laughs> I can be standing in the midst of a fire. And God says, I got you. Don't worry. We can go through the fire, we can come out on the other side, and we don't even smell like smoke. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Over in the book of Daniel. Good glory to God. That's one of my favorite stories in the Bible. He threw them Hebrew boys in there. And uh, he just knew they were done for. The guard that threw them in there died from the heat. They done. Oh, Jesus. There's four of them down there. Right. I'm going to tell you tonight. That's the God I belong to. Is that the God you belong to? That, we need to let the world know that's the God that we belong to. We need to be happy in the Lord. Happy in the Lord. Amen. Joyous in the Lord. God will put a smile on your face. Amen. God will put some pep in your step. Amen. God will give you a little something extra that you need for the week yeah, when you don't right. feel like getting up on Monday morning. Yeah, right. God says, let me give you a little help. Yeah. Let me give you a little extra nudge. Let me give you a little extra strength for the week. Yeah. And he says, that fire, the flames won't even kindle on you. Why? Because He is our protector. Right. They studying about this in Sunday school. Mm -hmm. They talk. Y'all talked about the healer today, didn't you? Yeah. The healer. Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Rapha the healer. Yeah. What did you just say, preacher? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Study the Bible. Come to Sunday school. Amen. You'll learn about this stuff. Amen. 
Jehovah Rapha. They're going to go home. These, these kids going home like, what did the preacher? The preacher said a bad word in church. <laughs> he said something about some Rapha fellow. Tell everybody about Rapha. <laughs> That's right. He is your healer. Yes, he you may be facing something. You might be in one of these three categories right now. You might be in the water. You might be in the river. You might be standing in the middle of the fire. Mm -hmm. But there is a God in heaven. Yeah. And it says He sits at the right hand of the yeah, throne of God right. and He's making intercession yeah. for us. And when we call out to Him yeah. and say, God, I'm in the middle of a storm. God, I'm in the middle of a fire. God, I feel like I'm drowning. He says, hold on. That's right. I think about a time when Jesus was laying in the belly of the ship yeah. and the storm come up. Yeah. Typical Baptist. <laughs> Where's Jesus? Hey, where's He at? Hey, Jesus, get up. Hey, we, we're about to drown out here. Don't you see what's going on? And Jesus just calmly, I can, yeah, <laughs> in my mind, <laughs> He just calmly comes out, don't say a word, walks out to the bow of the ship. Peace. Be still. Yeah. <sighs> Calm. Hey. Mm -hmm. That's the God that I belong hey. to. <laughs> that is the God that I belong to. Tonight. Yes. <coughs> Tonight you may be sitting in here and you say, Man, I I really would, I really would like to be a part of that. I really would like to be belonging to God. I really would like to belong and be a part of royal priesthood. Amen. Well, I want you to know tonight that you can. That's right. Yes. I would, uh, I would not do the gospel any service. I, do, I would not do God any justice if I did not share with you tonight that it is a free gift. Amen. Jesus Christ, we're coming, we're coming up on Easter. And I think about the events that took place and the price that Jesus paid that I couldn't pay. You know, we, we, we see the image here of an old rugged cross, a crown of thorns, spikes that were driven into His body. The Gospel's all laid out. He did it so you wouldn't have to. And He said, anyone that will come to me, I will in no wise cast them out. God is God is not a pushing, forceful person. God is a gentleman. He will not go where He is not welcome. We heard the story this morning of Him knocking. Jesus is knocking on your heart's door. Jesus is saying, I want to come in. I want to be a part. I want to help you. I want to take your burdens. I want to calm your fears. I want to help you through the fire. I want to help you through the river. But we have to take that step. You know, we they have all these programs available. And I thank God for the people who are blessed to help these people who are addicted to drugs and all these kind of things. You know, the first thing to get help is you got to admit. You got to admit that there's a problem. You got to admit that you stand in need of a Savior. And I'm asking tonight if you are in this room tonight, if you are a born again child of God, pray. Just simply pray tonight. But He also says in the Word that if we admit that we are a sinner, we must believe that He died on the cross for our sins. We must believe that He was born of a Virgin Mary. If we do that, then He says all we have to do is confess. Confess. What's that mean? I have to say, you have to say, God, I'm a sinner and I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry for the things that I've done. I'm sorry for the life that I lived. I believe that you died on that cross for me. I believe that you were born of a virgin Mary. 
And I'm confessing my sins before you today. God, I'm asking you to please come into my heart and save me. And that's it. The gift. It says the angels in heaven will rejoice over one soul. Whenever somebody accepts Christ in their heart and life, the heaven just stops. Hold on, hold on. God says, hold on. We got another one. We got another one coming in. And the angels begin to rejoice over one soul that comes to repentance. Just one. So tonight I'm going to mind the Lord for a moment. I want every person to just simply bow your heads. And like I said before, if you are a born again child of God, I need you praying in this moment. sitting in this room tonight and you say preacher I want to belong to him I belong to my mom and dad but I want to belong to Jesus I want to belong to the king of kings and the lord of lords and I feel God pulling at my heart tonight and if I were to take my last breath tonight I do not know where I'm going to spend eternity I do not know if I'm going to stand and stand and enter into the kingdom of heaven or if I'll be cast into hell. I just don't know. If that's you tonight, just raise your hand anywhere in the building. Anybody. If you are unsure where you'll spend your eternity, God bless that hand. Any others tonight? Well, I want you to know tonight God has given His Son a free gift. Young man, I know that you are a father. I want you to imagine this tonight. Having to give your child a ransom for the sins of the entire world. Knowing what they're going to do. But yet, God said, I'm going to give my son for you. Tonight, if God's pulling at your heart, I want you to just pray with me. Pray this prayer. God, I know I'm a sinner. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. And I confess my sin before you tonight. And God, I ask you to come into my heart. God, I'm sorry. 